welcome back to Hi Ho. My name is Sam Wallace. I am a sociologist and former researcher, and I have a little YouTube channel where I talk to people about what they do, how they do it, and how we can learn to do it ourselves at home. And tonight, I am so happy to be joined by one of my bestest friends in the entire world, Matt Weiss. Hi, Matt. How are you doing? Hi. Welcome I'm to doing the show. great. All Thank right, you. we're so happy to have you tonight. Um, gosh, we've been friends for like how long now? We just we just celebrated an anniversary in July, right? Yeah, fifteen years. So I've known you for half of my life. Yeah, see, this is the true OG day one right here. So we go way back, and we throughout the last fifteen years of our friendship, both of us have done a bit of traveling and grown up quite a bit and learned about what to do, how to do it on the cheap and how to plan it out. So thanks for coming to talk to us about it tonight. And so for those of you watching who actually don't know Matt, and I know some of you do, but if you don't know Matt, Matt, tell us a little about yourself. What should we know about you? Why are you so cool? Oh my goodness. Well, um, <laughs> my name is Matt Weiss. I'm 30 years old. I am from Las Vegas, Nevada. And um, I would say that even though I've been to a lot of places, I didn't really have the travel bug, so to say, uh, mm -hmm. until a little bit later in life. Um, so it kind of came from a dark moment when I was kind of, um, when I was dealing through a lot of things and uh, I, I pretty much hit rock bottom and I thought to myself like, oh, you know, I could totally die without, seeing Mount Fuji in Japan or I'll never get to see London if I keep living this way. So like it took this weird rock bottom moment for me to actually turn everything around and, and find that, um, that passion for traveling, which still carries on to this day. A lot of people think that like you need to have the travel bug to travel, but it's not really like that. Right. It, it comes out of different moments in your life and, it's not just so easy sometimes as getting up and going when you want to go somewhere, right? It, it takes a little bit of planning to do. And have you learned um, a lot of things that you've shared with me to actually help my, pack my bags and help me check regulations when I fly and stuff. And so you've been like so many different places. Can you tell us a little bit about the places that you have been? Because I know I'm super jealous, but we'll see what the audience says. Uh, well, I've been to quite a few places in the States. I want to say, starting off on the West Coast, Seattle, Los Angeles, uh, San Francisco, Portland, and then um, even further west, uh, Hawaii, and uh, New York City, Chicago, Miami, New Orleans, Austin, Boise. And those are like the major the major cities I've been to um, and actually stayed and visited. Mm -hmm. And then uh, internationally would be uh, Mexico, Cuba, um, England, Ireland, France, and Australia. Oh, so you got to do a little bit of domestic travel and you got to do a bit of international travel and I mean, what were your experiences like? Um, what's the difference between traveling between one place to another? Are there like any things that tip of the brain that you think of like, oh, I'm going here, I should think about this? Um, okay, well, definitely traveling locally versus, or I mean, tra traveling domestically versus mm -hmm. internationally. Um, it's so much easier just to pack and be like, oh, well, if I don't have it, I'll, I could just buy it somewhere else, you know, because there's, there's a CVS around the corner or like a Dwayne Reed if you're, in, if you're in New York City. So when you when you uh, pack for an international trip, it, there's like such a finality to it because if you've left something, especially something really important, mm. uh, for example, like your passport or, or, or like a, a phone charger, you don't, you might not really know how to get that when you're in you know, the country that you visit. So mm -hmm. I, I would say it's a lot more relaxed when you're traveling domestically. 
So when we're thinking about uh, planning for international travel and kind of the finality of it, can we talk a little bit about like what actually goes into planning a trip overseas, abroad, or outside of the United States? So yeah. I mean, what, what, what people want to know on the blogs is how much does it cost? How can I travel cheaply? What if I'm by myself? I don't speak the language, those things. So let's talk a little bit about like, if we're starting from the beginning and I want to plan a trip to Europe, let's say, mm. let's talk a little bit about how we would do that. Well, obviously it would depend on which country in Europe you're going to. If you're going to London, you don't really have to worry about picking up a language, obviously, mm. um, or, or England rather. But um, you know, if you're if you're going to Spain or if you're going to Italy, that's going to be a huge uh, factor as well. Uh, but I would definitely start by saying research. Research is key. You want to know uh, exactly, you know, where you're going, some of the customs, some of the um, recommendations. So that definitely helps. So uh, research would be a key. Um, I would say to wisely plan. You're gonna wanna, you're gonna wanna see what activities are there, or mm -hmm. the things that uh, drew you to the place uh, in the first place. Mm -hmm. So um, there's been times where I have just gone to a country just on a whim just to check it out, and there have been times where there's been a concert happening. So I'll plan everything around that. Um, Another you mean really, that time you went to like that really cool rave in Australia and then you were like, uh, meh, and you called me and yeah. I was so jealous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, that, that wasn't really central around the whole, the whole trip. So for, for those of you who don't know, uh, I went to Australia uh, at the end of February of this year. So kind of before everything got really crazy mm -hmm. and um, kind of going back to what I was saying, I, I, researched to see what was happening around the areas that I would be in. So I decided, oh, cool, there's this rave, I'll go. Uh, uh, it wasn't really for me, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I went. It was yeah. all right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so just it helps to have things planned in a way that you're like, okay, well, this is already taken care of because I feel, I feel that the type of traveler I am, I like to have things kind of paid for out of sight, out of mind. So super okay. easy. If you have tickets to something, then you don't have to really worry about, you don't have to worry about, Oh, what am I going to do when I'm there? So it keeps a little bit of a, like a linear element to what you're trying to do. So you want to know where you're going. You want to know a little bit of customs, maybe a little bit of some phrases of language. And you want to know the things that you want to see. And then the next step would be, all right, now we, we got to book the trip. So how do we go about looking for lodging or finding uh, plane tickets on the cheap? Or if we're coming in from a closer country, like uh, bus tickets or rail tickets? Mm -hmm. um, I, would say, I would say, first of all, if you're looking for lodging, map things out. Um, what really helps me, uh, I think this was, I used this the first time I went to New York City. Uh, I had just, I had gone there for a, a set of concerts and I had mapped out the venue and I had mapped out maybe a few things that I wanted to see in New York City just off the top of my head. And I thought, I thought to myself, oh, oh, those things are pretty close. Not to mention, you know, Manhattan is pretty small anyway. But um, okay, well, if I wake up at uh, you know around this area, I'll be able to take care of all this and see all this. So mapping things out really does help uh, perspective mm -hmm. because if you just go off hotel ratings, you might be staying at a really nice hotel, but you're going to be five miles away from the things you actually wanted to see. Okay. So um, when it comes to plane tickets, uh, it's kind of controversial, but my my rule of thumb, what I always do is I will go just directly through the airline. And I know that costs me a lot more money, but it also saves me a lot in headaches. So um, 
However, that being said, I will use third-party sites just to gauge uh, a price range mm -hmm. and use that as a reference. And you know, maybe 65% of the time, if you go on the website of the actual airline, you can find that same price, if not pretty close. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, the reason I do that is because anytime you use a third-party website, the attitude from the company um, whose, whose flight you're actually using is if anything were to happen, it, it's more of like, oh, well, you know, that's kind of what you get for using a third-party booking service. So mm. that's why I tend to stay away from it. And um, if, there, like, if there's any problems, any lost baggage, you can go directly through the airline with your confirmation number. And I've had experience in the past that have led me to this uh, conclusion. I don't know if things have changed now. I'd imagine not. Yeah. So yeah, so, no, when it comes to um, booking transportation, like uh, within the city, just research, basically research. So so research. H how do I actually do that? Do I Google? How do I do the subway in New York? How do I use the the metro in Paris? How do we actually look into the types of travel there? So what types of things do you use to help you research when you're getting to know a new area you haven't been before? Um, yeah, I mean, Google is a great start. I think we've become super dependent on it, but I'm, I'm a traveler who is, is just self-taught. You know, I've learned from trial and error how to, be successful and I still have hiccups every now and then because you can't you can't do anything perfectly and there's so many things you really can't project um to happen but yeah, yeah Google's a great research also talking to people uh any friends who might have gone to the same country or from that same country uh, it helps uh tremendously tremendously uh, that's how I learned about the tube in London uh, that's how I learned about uh, the Eurostar trains that will link link you to multiple countries in Europe. Mm -hmm. So I, I took that to go um, from London to Paris and then back, which was a really cheap and great option. But, but yeah, the more time you have to really look into it, the better. So plan so, in advance, right? Don't don't do it like, oh, I'm going next week. Um. That's the type of person I am. I'm very <laughs> much a planner. I'm very, uh, I'm very type A personality when it comes to planning mm -hmm. the trip. But once I'm there, then I kind of uh, settle into a type B personality. But that being said, there are other um, websites that offer great, great deals for people who are just like, you know, I, I just want to see what this company has to offer, and it'll be you know, a website that'll say, you know, $199 round trip ticket to the Bahamas leaving in two weeks. Well, mm -hmm. of course, you know, why not take it? I would. So there's sometimes some last minute deals for people who just might want to go willy nilly, you know? Right. And there was a website you were telling me about um, in that email you sent me. It starts with a J, but I can't remember it. J um what is that called i i don't know but we have it in the description but um you mentioned like booking.com and airbnb are great places to use for finding lodging once you're there so why yeah. do you recommend those two um airbnb has just been a huge breakthrough in the travel community um as long as i could remember it's probably five years it's when I became consciously aware of it. Mm -hmm. uh, Airbnb is great because you're you're generally gonna be staying in a in a really authentic part of town. It, you know, it's someone's flat, it's someone's apartment, it's in an actual neighborhood, so you're not you don't really feel like you're a tourist mm -hmm. um, staying in this nice fancy hotel. And I've always I've been reticent to use it in the very beginning, you know, because I I always thought like, oh, well, you know, cleaning standards are kind of weird if it's someone else's house, you know, yeah. versus like this this nice like hotel or hostel or whatever. Um, 
but I quickly changed my tune to that. I've had nothing but positive experiences through Airbnb. Um, and even when something were to go awry, the hosts have a hundred percent of the time for me anyway, responded very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, Booking.com I like because again, uh, I'm a planner, so I like mm -hmm. to know that my lodging is paid for before I even get on the plane. And um, yeah. while not all their options are pay up front, a lot of them are. So um, when I was booking when I was booking my trip to Japan, which didn't happen because <laughs> of the virus, uh, I, yeah. I went through booking.com. Uh, so yeah, I, I have a, I have a philosophy when it comes to flights about just booking directly through the airline um, versus there's a little more wiggle room when it comes to third party sites for uh, lodging because it's it doesn't break the bank if something were to happen and like I said yeah. out of sight out of mind it's paid for good boom mm -hmm. you're there. Um, and I just want to say to whoever's tuning in, Valencia, hi. Valencia was our guest last week. She's watching live and hi. she commented on how useful Airbnb is. And um, I'll throw it in there too. My experience with Airbnb, um, if I'm like traveling locally um, where I need to do like a quick trip, I usually stay in a hotel. We have like credit card points we use for that. But when I'm doing like a trip to Santa Monica, or when I went to Philly or when I went to Croatia, we definitely use Airbnb and we got spots that were like right near where we wanted to be because maybe they don't have hotels right there. So Santa Monica, I was in like a little, little like one or two bedroom apartment, like right next to the beach and everything lining Santa Monica. That's like an official hotel is like three or 400 a night Yeah, when you could just stay at an Airbnb. And the coolest part is when we went abroad and used Airbnb. Uh, and if you're traveling to Zagreb in Croatia, I definitely recommend looking this guy up. You just want to type in the graffiti flat. There is a graffiti artist there who's been doing the graffiti in the community for 20 years. And the great thing about him and other Airbnb hosts is like they have their own special knowledge or sometimes thing that they offer as you booking with them. So we got offered a around the city graffiti tour, street art mm. tour, and he was just the nicest guy. I got sick. We both got sick. And he had these herbs, this chamomile that they grew on oh. his parents' farm and they made their own teas. And he brought us like a giant bag to make us tea and told us how to like go find medicine and where the pharmacies were. So it's really nice to have like a host there who can really help you. And they seem like genuinely wanting to be a part of your experience. Yeah. And I, I've, I've loved it. I, I got into trouble so one night, but that was it. Yeah. They're so excited. They're like, they're like, yeah, like I'll show you around. Yeah. Uh, it, it, they love it. So yeah, it, it makes for a really authentic experience for sure. You get the local knowledge too. And I guess um, I, I, I tend to stay in the like more hip parts of town instead yeah. of like the historical ones, but I like the nightlife and we stayed in an Airbnb. You like the boogie. I, I loved a boogie. <laughs> so we stayed in the Airbnb from this uh, young woman who had a condo like in Berlin and she liked to go clubbing as well. So she gave us the ins and outs of how to get into these clubs, where they were. Uh -huh. And if you're clubbing in Berlin, Germany, just kind of, beware you don't know what you might be quite be getting yourself into so she let us know like this is what happens here and yeah. this is what happens here and this one you might not ever make it into you're gonna have to wait in line for six hours and we were like okay and oh. she was right yeah, yeah she definitely. was right uh so are there any other like helpful uh like websites or apps that you use that help you travel um whether it's abroad or domestically and what are they good for? Um, yeah, definitely. I've gotten so much more proficient at using apps and technology and aiding with my travel plans. So I would say um, Hopper or Skyscanner. Like I said, I don't like to go through third party uh, booking when it comes to airlines, but those two sites, Hopper and Skyscanner, will give you a good idea of your price ranges in general, uh -huh. uh, what you're working with. 
Um, and I'm so steadfast on this idea that I found a trip, a flight to Australia from New Orleans where I was leaving from at the time because it was kind of a quadruple uh, destination vacation, what have you. And uh, I found the... I found a ticket for about $750 and I paid mm -hmm. close to double that just to go oh. straight through Virgin Airlines because I just didn't want any hassle. It could have worked out. It could have been totally fine. I would have saved a lot yeah. of money. Um, but I will skimp on so many things. I will not skimp on airline tickets, you know, if, yeah. if based with the choice. Um, when it comes to accommodation, however, uh, I am very bare minimum, very bare bones when it comes to that stuff. I am there to see the city. I am there to taste the food. I am there to meet the people. So if it's not an Airbnb, it's hostel city for me. It's hostels. It's cheap motels, whatever. As long as um, my stuff is relatively safe and I'm not going to get attacked, then I'm, I'm great. So this is Matt's advice. I am definitely not on the same page in terms of watching. I, I'm i just um, a little too comfortable, I suppose. Well, you know, the worst is traveling with someone who's, who doesn't share that same belief. Uh, so traveling you know, with I'm, someone I'm who someone, believes. Well, right, because I'm <laughs> someone who usually plans the whole trip for me and my friend or whoever. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> they'll often get to the place and they're like, where – why? Where are you taking me? Oh, so, yeah. um, be warned. Be warned and be safe. Yeah. Um, and we have a comment here uh, from our old friend Mina. We both oh, know Mina. Mina. Mina's yeah. watching. Hey, nice to Hi. see you, Mina. Thanks for watching tonight. Uh, that gal's done a bit of traveling too. Maybe I'll chat with her one night. Um, so I think um, a couple things that help me in terms of tech and apps, let me know if you agree. Um, it, whatever airline I'm traveling with, I download their app. So my yep. tickets are all there and ready to go. And I sign up for their frequent flyer mile programs or rewards programs. I haven't really done anything with any of the miles because I, I don't know, but I just kind of do it. You know, you never know how much you might be traveling. Um, and then I use some like translation apps because sometimes I don't, I just don't know. Like there are some places I go and I just can't pronounce the basics. Like where's the bathroom? Like my mouth just won't move like that. You need that one. Do you need yeah. that? <laughs> yeah. So I linked in the description uh, below just a couple, I'm learning the screen below. Um, a couple different types of translator apps. Some of them you can snap a photo of your menu and it will translate a photo for you. Some of them you can type into, some of them you can speak into and they will speak out or also deliver in text um, the intended message in the language you're trying to accommodate. So if you're in, in Mexico, you can't read the menu, take a picture of it and it'll translate that to English. Or you can pick up the app and say, where is the bathroom? And it'll translate that into Croatian for you. And so you can see it on the screen and speak it out loud so you can practice That's so it. cool. And yeah, I find those really I've seen helpful. those. Yeah. Um, and also your, your calendar app and your alarm clock are your best friend when you're traveling. Oh, can we talk about best friends yes, here? Yes, yes. Okay. So one other app that I like to use, uh, I was turned on to it by someone I met uh, while working on a cruise ship. It's called Trip It. Trip T -R -I -P -I -T. It. T-R-I-P-I-T. Okay. So what it will do is once you link your email to this app, it will um, it will sync up all of your reservations in one neat little resource. So you kind of have an itinerary wow. plan. Nice. Sometimes it misses a few things. Um, uh -huh. But I also recommend printing a small pocket-sized itinerary. Again, very type A, but generally helps me out with reservation, confirmation numbers, the time you're supposed to check in, check out, everything. Definitely mm -hmm. helps. But uh, the holy grail of traveling uh, uh, technology, I'll say, is Google Maps and a oh. local 
SIM card yes. if you're traveling internationally. I cannot stress that enough. I am someone who skimps on everything but airline tickets. And <laughs> <laughs> um, I never bought a SIM card in any country I was in because I was like, oh, it's, it's no big deal. I'll just use the Wi-Fi when I'm there, no problem. So uh, unbeknownst to me, that actually costed me a lot more money and a lot more effort because oh. what do you have to do when you when you use Wi-Fi in a coffee shop? You have to buy something, usually. Oh, um, yes, yes. And then it's very inconvenient when you're trying to find, you know, oh, what's a good place to eat, this and that. So if you have your Google Maps and you have a saved map of places you want to go, you can access that with uh, your cell phone service by getting a local SIM card in the, in the uh, country that you're in, which generally will run you about 30 to $40. I bought one for the very first time in February when I landed in Australia and it, it changed up the game. So definitely consider that. They sell them right outside um, when you deplane in the airport. Okay. Yeah. I haven't actually done the SIM card thing myself, but I did think um, to call my phone provider, my cell phone service provider, and they had an international plan that included like data, calling and texting. Mm -hmm. um, Cause every, it doesn't matter how old I am or where I go, my mom's always like, let me know you're there. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, what was cool <laughs> about that is I have an iPhone and um, I was able to text people in the States with my new number, oh, yeah. so I didn't, I wasn't yes. consciously, uh, you know, aware that I had a new number. So I'd be like, hey, what's up? How's it going? And they're like, who are you? You know, because I've got like an 06 Australia number. And, but yeah, it's really cool. But don't call people because you won't have to pay any money, but the person who picks up will. Oh, goodness. My sister learned that the hard way. Oh, no. That's, that's the yeah. worst. I, I remember getting a text from you and I saw the number and I'm like, oh, um. Can you text me first so I don't I don't know how to type all these numbers in like uh, this, my American side coming through. Um, so SIM cards are really nice to use, and so besides all all the websites and apps you can use, what's like some actual like? Do you have any technological recommendations? I remember like back 10, 15 years ago traveling, and you're like bringing your little digital camera and stuff like that, but like. Do you have any specific tips for like technology we might be able to bring with on a trip? Yes. Yes, okay. actually. I have all this stuff um, pretty close by. So first, first thing is first. Uh, I didn't have to learn this through trial and error, miraculously. Oh, God. Um, but they're, um, what are these called? like uh, international DC like power plugs. They're amazing. Oh. The reason I have two is because I thought I lost one, so I had to buy another one when I went to Australia. But um, okay. you have, you know, EU. So if you're like, you know, in um, France, and then you've got uh, US. So I actually did use this when I was moving because it was like the only power block I had. So I still was able to use it in the States. So you got a US one. They just pop out with all the different, um, you know, pretty standard plugs. This is the one for Australia. Uh -huh. And I think this is the exact same setup, just a different shape, different company. But okay. those are really cool. And another thing I recommend, um, I don't have it with me because I changed phones, but what saved me in Europe was a uh, phone case that's a charger that's actually a battery pack built into it. Oh, that's a great idea. Incredible, incredible. Yeah. It's a little bulky but totally worth it and i think if you get lost anywhere the one thing you can rely on is your phone so you want to make sure that that's charged like at all times yeah and i started traveling before smartphones were even really a thing but now mm -hmm. it's like oh i can't imagine not having my phone just in case of an emergency or whatever but yeah. um which leads me to my next product just a standalone battery pack in case you have to charge anything else or even your okay. phone um, these are great. You can the uh, you can buy those battery packs that are phone cases for about twenty dollars, and I think these are even cheaper. I think I bought this for oh, like nice. seven or eight bucks, and oh, cool. it holds a charge pretty well. So definitely recommend that. Um, 
think, okay, this thing's cool. This is a uh, phone case. It's waterproof. So, oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. And most okay, of the Let me times, get a closer look, little grandma. Yeah. Hubbard. <laughs> it's by a company called Seawag. Okay. And it's really cool. I took it to go snorkeling um, in Hawaii. But when I was, I think that was actually the only time I used it submerged in water. But it's really convenient because it's got this really nifty neck strap. So when I was, um, when I did zip lining also in Hawaii, you know, I didn't really have to worry about dropping my phone and I was able to kind of like film through it. Oh, so it's yeah. really cool. It's really convenient. I like it. Nice. Yeah. And it, it really is waterproof. It's got little seals and everything. Cause I'm always really, really skeptical when it comes to stuff like that, but it's cool. I like yeah. it. So when you travel and you use earplugs, do you prefer the big muffy ones or do you prefer like little Airbud type things? Ugh. Did I say Airbud? I know. Like, I say I do that too. Oh, like it's not the dog that shoots <laughs> the, 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 hoops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, um, We're old. No, the little ear, the ear thing yeah, yeah. here. A you know, AirPods. wireless. Oh my gosh, the AirPods. Yes. Yeah. Do you like the earmuffs or the earbuds? <laughs> <laughs> I like uh, Airbud. Oh, got you. right. Movie. Just throw some gold retrievers right on your head. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you have a preference with those when you travel? Like, are you conserving for space or like, are you worried about them coming uncharged as you walk around? Um, I'll say generally for space. Actually, these very headphones I used to bring on onto planes with me mm -hmm. when, you know, iPhones had like a normal audio jack. Um, but then I went and bought these really expensive uh you know, air, air pods. Am I saying that right? <laughs> air pods. <laughs> and kids, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And every time I would like run across the street, they would tumble out of my, out of my ear and onto the street. And this was during uh, like coronavirus times in the very beginning. Cause this was like, this is for first week in March, I was already in Australia when things started to come to a head. So I yeah. don't know. It's a touchy subject. Pass. Yeah, uh, so I guess uh, it's up to individual preference, you know. Yeah. I think about, like, what can I sleep in, but then I always forget to charge them. And then I'm like, well, why am I even bringing headphones in the first place? I'm probably just to, like, listen to, like, a movie on the plane, you know. So yeah, I just throw them around yeah. my – I would prefer the – some big squishy ones, but I don't have any. So I just have these little – these little dinkers by, like, Skull Candy or something. I would say, though, um, if I had to choose, I would still choose the AirPods because mm -hmm. this this really all this really says, especially if you're traveling alone, which I've done a lot of, is, hey, I can't hear you. And if you're coming uh, up behind me, no idea. So I, I would say, like, a little a little more discretion is good. Yeah, don't don't stand out. Don't look like a tourist, yeah. right? And this is not from being, like, paranoid. I was actually... Uh, pickpocketed before in Paris. Ooh. Which was, it was only it was only 10 euros, but still. Oh, still 10 still. euros lost. Yeah. Darn. Uh, you live and you learn, right? And then you right. can share the tips with us. Yes. So are there anything, um, like any things to think about related to travel, like, like in terms of the rules? Like what are the rules? Like what are some travel policies you can talk to us about? And uh, one thing I didn't even think about was immunizations. I don't think I've been anywhere yeah. that required immunizations. So can you talk to us a little bit about um, travel policies and immunizations and maybe where to find out more info about it? Yeah. Um, so when it comes to uh, immunizations, I got turned on to that as, uh, when I went to Cuba in 2016. Mm -hmm. I did what was called the People to People program. Um, uh, I'm not sure if you are aware, but you can't, as an American citizen, um, even with, you know, Cuban bloodline, whatever, you just be like, oh, I want to take a trip to Cuba. You can't do that. You cannot do that. So you have to go through mm -hmm. something called the People to People program, and they will arrange uh, um, your accommodation. And it's basically uh, the short way of saying it. It's, it's an educational trip. So, okay. you know, my trip wasn't just, oh, let's go to the beach and drink a few, you know, it wasn't like that at all. 
Uh, so it was Spanish lessons, dance lessons, cultural excursions. It was really cool um, for two weeks. Uh, oh, the website, Jacara. Jacara. Jacara, that, that okay, that's what yeah, we were yeah. talking about earlier. That, and they do other countries too, um, but it's, it was super awesome. But anyway, before I before I actually flew out and before I actually got you know the green light to go, um, I was sent a list of things I needed to be vaccinated for, uh, which were, what was it? I think it was, I think it was uh, cholera, rabies, tetanus, and hepatitis A. You had to get a rabies vaccine? Uh, yeah, it was almost four years ago. I'm pretty sure I got all four of those. Uh, yeah. And they Wait, were recommended. Did you have to did you have to get the series where you go back like three days, five days, seven days, 14 days, or was it just the one? I don't recall. I know I had to come back for a few, so I can't remember. Oh, okay. Like, so yeah. I just happen to have recent experience with the rabies <laughs> vaccines, as you know. So here's our funny story. Not so funny if you listen. But. No, it's not. <laughs> So Matt came to visit a couple months ago, and I was supposed to – I can't even do this without laughing my butt off. I was supposed to pick Matt up at the airport, and I did not pick Matt up at the airport because why? She got bit by a dog in her apartment complex, so – yeah, that was pretty bad. But she was really apologetic. You were really apologetic about it. You know, you're like, I'm so sorry. Uh, like, hey, man, you just got bit by a dog. I'll, I'll take a lift. That's fine. That is fine. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah. So when you're traveling, uh, plan out who's going to pick you up. And uh, just in case they get attacked by a doggy while they're taking their doggy to go pee before they come pick you up. At the Unforeseen circumstances. Okay, I didn't think the idea of rabies was gonna come up, and I'm just. It struck a about, chord. Oh, I, need, I know I need to maintain my composure. <laughs> all right, take two. All right, all right. Um, all right another so, thing I would uh, say on that cholera. same. There we go. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but visas check. You can always check through the embassy, um, okay. and you know through through various websites of you know the country you'll be visiting. Again, Google, what I did was before I went to Australia, it was just, I checked, I think I just Googled it. Just like, do I need a visa as an American citizen to travel to uh, Australia? And uh -huh. I think I got directed to the embassy's website, the U.S. embassy's website or something. Okay. And uh, what I got was, uh, it's called, a, what was it called? Anyway, uh, it, it was basically like a temporary visa. It was an electronic visa. I think it was called like an ETA or EFA or something like that. And okay. you just you just apply for it online. It's like eight dollars, and you get approved for it in uh -huh. minutes. So yeah, just be sure you check definitely okay. because that's the worst place to be is in line, going from one country to another, and you can't go because you didn't do your research. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to make sure always you have your passport, right? And you can yes. also get a passport card. It's not quite as expensive, but it only works, if I'm not mistaken, for Mexico and Canada. And it doesn't have your photo on it. Um, but you need your passport for most of the places. Um, and we actually have a, a question from one of our viewers here. Uh, have you ever been to NK? If not, do you have a desire to visit one day? Uh, thanks for the question, Valencia, but I don't actually know what NK is. North Korea. <laughs> oh, I don't North know. Korea? Um, oh, if it is North Korea, how, how do you feel about that? Are you interested in going to North Korea? Not yet. Same here. Yep. One day. I, I don't know if I'm going to make it out. Now uh, I'm trying to think of other places that have, that have NK. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. My first thought was North Dakota. <laughs> it wouldn't make any sense. Let's go. I, actually, North North Dakota's not so bad to go to. You know? Sure, I want to. I want to go to all fifty states. So, 
I'll well, be there one day. When, when you get to North Dakota, let me know. I'll, I'll hook you up with Grandma. Okay. She'll take care of you. All right. Uh, so when you get your um, immunizations, the country wants to make sure that you're healthy or not going to spread some disease when you go in. Um, mm -hmm. But what about when you get to a place? What do you do to make sure that you're healthy? And what if you have to, like, see a doctor? Okay. So I'm glad you brought this up. So I'm it's gonna like preface this. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna preface this with um, always, always buy travel insurance, and usually you can buy that whenever you book a flight or, um, or even other things. Like even uh, some excursions will offer it to you, like a link. But just uh -huh. have yourself a Google and right. and look it up. But uh, I was in. Uh, so me and my best friend had a trip planned to Europe. So we were going to be in uh, Dublin, Ireland, uh, London, England, and Paris, France. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the day before we were supposed to leave, we both got insanely sick uh, with, mm. it seemed just like a, like a cold, not even a flu, because uh -huh. I think in two days, uh, he got better. He got totally, he was fine. Totally uh -huh. fine. Um, I slowly degenerated into the worst chills and fever I ever had in my life. And of course the day that it was its worst was on a Sunday and nothing is open on Sundays pretty much universally. Like yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. So of course that had to be the worst day. I, I woke my friend up, uh, like, sweating and I had ch cold chills and it was just nasty. So I knew at that point that I had to go to the hospital. I'm not someone who likes to go to the hospital or makes it a habit. So uh, we end up catching a taxi to the hospital and I get to this emergency room in London mm -hmm. and they, they see me, you know, they treat me. And at the very end, you know, I come out to the, um, I come out to the receptionist and in my mind, and I still, I know about how healthcare works there kind of, but, uh, uh -huh. I, I'm not from there. So I still think that, you know, U S rules apply. So I'm like, okay, well, how much do I owe you? And she looked at me like I was crazy oh, because goodness. healthcare is, is free. It's provided, it's paid for by, um, taxpayers dollars. Uh -huh. So, um, it was a really great experience. I got better, by the way. Um, but dang, if that wasn't if that wasn't free, I can't imagine how much I would pay. I think she just asked for my zip code uh, and I or area code. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I don't live here. Well, I'm staying in an Airbnb. And she's like, well, what's the area or zip code of the Airbnb? So that's that was it. I didn't pay anything. No, Emergency room on a Sunday. Oh, that's that's so awesome. I remember I got sick abroad and it was the worst thing. I I was doing a three country trip like you and the country I started in, I got pneumonia and had to carry it through me the rest of the way. And I was yeah. asking the locals like, is there a quick care? And they're like, what's a quick care? And then I was like, oh shoot, well, um, something might be getting lost in translation, but okay. Is there a hospital? Is there an emergency room? And they're like, yeah, but it's like really expensive. And I'm like, oh crap. Like this is going to be like two, $3,000. Cause I don't know how the medicine works everywhere. The last thing I thought it was getting sick and they're like, yeah, yeah. You probably have to pay like 75 or a hundred dollars. And I like my mouth dropped. I was like, that's so cheap. <laughs> right? Oh my God. And they were like, what? And then I said, what? And I was like, yeah, yeah, no, like we pay a lot for healthcare in the United States and the trip yeah. to the emergency room could be hundreds of dollars. Yeah. And I'm real bad sick right now. But I didn't actually make it to the ER and thought it was just a cold. So I got the herbs and tea from my Airbnb host. And then, so if you take things like Tylenol or Advil, the active ingredients don't have necessarily the same names in other countries. So be aware of that. So if you need medicine, go right. to your pharmacy and talk to your pharmacist or ask right. someone you know there. Um, yeah. So 
I was taking paracetamol. It's similar to our Tylenol or something. Uh, like yeah, that, I have I think. that. I have that still, actually. I yeah. Think it, I think it might be. Yeah. Anyway, I yeah. have some. So be sure to like ask the pharmacist. And I say with most places I went, the pharmacist, one of them spoke English, which was nice. And if you get stuck on a Sunday, I was able to find some pharmacies that were open on a Sunday. And if you're in Croatia, you find the building with the green cross on it. Now in America, if you go to the place with the green cross on it, <laughs> you're gonna get a very different type of medicine. You're gonna end up at the dispensary. Yeah. So um, yeah, I was like, why are you guys sending me to this? Oh wait, it's illegal here. Oh, I know. pharmacy. So, but um, I, I thought that too. Yes, uh, it, I was. I was so confused, but right, like I was. I would just barely got my sea legs in that country, and now I had to yeah. figure out the whole sick thing. So, so I recommend even if it takes room in my um, luggage, I bring a little bit of medicine of like every kind I could possibly think of, because some stuff idea. they don't even sell there. It might not be legal. Yeah, um, that's a really great idea. See, I'm learning too. Um, yeah, I just kind of deal with it as it goes. Fever, but, yeah. Well, like, you know me, I get like sick or I'm like mildly uncomfortable and I'm un unhappy, you know? Um, and I tend to like start coughing really, really heavily when I go new places. So there's a couple things I'll talk about later that I keep on hand with me like all the time to make mm -hmm. my travel experience better because it's just being uncomfortable while you're traveling is the worst and being like feeling like insecure like you don't know what to do to do, be healthy is a whole different feeling and i'd right. rather avoid it if i can and and if people know me like i'm the over prepared worry wart when it comes to all things like even my purse it's got the whole pharmacy in there it's got snacks it's got dog treats it's got treats for your dog as well you know all why things. haven't we traveled together geez that sounds amazing i just need you to hold my stuff <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm like the walking Walgreens for the group, you know, yeah. I, I, like all my friends when I'm walking out, they're like, do you got any snacks in that purse? Do you got any candy? Yeah. <laughs> of course I do, but like, yeah, yeah I'll share it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. So staying healthy, very good. Eat, remember to drink your water, right? Drink mm -hmm. the good water. Drink bottled water if you can, if you're unsure of things. Um, but what else, um, have you learned from like your time traveling, um, that like, or your time from the cruise ships that like help you become a more, uh, a pro professional traveler. So like, what was it like being on a cruise ship, like, and having to live like a tiny life and learning to pack like just the essentials? Well, it just that it taught me minimalism. Mm -hmm. really just being conscious of what you need versus what you'd like. Mm -hmm. And that carried over in a huge way. Uh, when I went to Australia, I think it was the first time I ever went to another country where I only had a carry on mm -hmm. to, to last me. Uh, well, it was supposed to be a two and a half month trip. Um, yeah. But you know, it, it, ultimately got cut short but i would have been fine i would have been totally fine and that it just minimalism is really is really tricky to to learn especially in this day and age mm -hmm. um but once you can get a handle on it that's the key yeah so we want to downsize and if, if you have like a multi-use something instead of four yeah, different things. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So do you mind if we talk about some of our like favorite travel products and things that we like absolutely have to have? Yeah, no, I don't mind at all. I'm excited. I've got some things over here to the side and I think you do too as well. And I would love uh, for us might. to talk about our favorites and yeah. why they're our favorites. So mine, mine are a little uh, boring, but I swear by them. I do. So um, you want to go first? 
Sure. Okay. All right. You offered. All right. So one of the main things for me when I'm traveling is being clean and being comfortable. Um, and oh my goodness, my eyelash is falling off, but we're just going to rock it. We're going to rock it. Okay. Mine too. <laughs> so um, a couple things I like to always have in my carry on that I can immediately get to um, without a doubt. I always need my chapstick. I'm always looking for a great chapstick, but especially on the plane, my lips get all shrivelly. or when I go out into the sun or go to the beach somewhere, I want to protect them. So I'd like to have a chapstick. I usually have one with SPF in it. Mm -hmm. um, and I also carry around these little soap sheets. It's like everywhere I go, there's never soap. And yeah, they're just like little paper sheets. They come in like what? a little. Yeah, these are super cool. So that's amazing. Are, right. And they're and just so, one time use. One time use. So you rub this in your hands and it dissolves into soap. This so is madness. You and, you know, like TSA has these rules on like how much liquids you can bring. Right. So yeah. this isn't a liquid and it's perfect for taking to the bathroom in the airport and in on the airplane. And Brilliant. another thing I like to use. um at night and when I'm on the airplane, I have like one of these eye cooling sticks. So it's like my eyes get really dry. And when my mm. eyes get dry, like they kind of crinkle and they really yeah. hurt. So I put this on for a little extra moisture and it helps wake me up. If I'm about to arrive, it, it has like a little bit of like menthol or caffeine in it and just gives me a little pop. And two other things that I carry together, I have a vapor rub stick. And you kind of just unwind it like this, and you put it in your nose, you give it a I sniff. Because you, I always get stuffy. I always get like, it, it seems like I frequently get sick when I travel now. But this helps clear your nose up pretty quick. It's just a quick shot. And I also carry a mini um, chloroseptic spray. So if I have a sore throat. I either bring cough drops or I bring this because it has a little bit of like numbing in it. That's amazing. That's a yeah. really great idea, and I'm learning a lot. And one other thing I have here is my, it's a little, it's like one of those silicone bags where I just keep, like, some wipes for, like, the bathroom. And then if you yeah. have, like, tampons or stuff you need to keep dry, I keep it in here. And I keep a few of these because when you pack a tiny carry-on for a long trip, you need to wash stuff. So I have these little pods, like these little laundry soap pods. Yeah. Or I carry dry laundry soap with me, and I bring it in my uh, waterproof little baggie. So that way, uh, like I've been to Montreal. I've been to Berlin in the middle of the summer, and I'm sweating my buns off. I can't bring 20 shirts, but I can bring three. And I can wash exactly. them. Exactly. So and that's another I thing. I always bring something to wash. I want to hit on something while you uh, are on that subject. When you are booking a, an Airbnb or a hostel and you want to just carry a carry-on bag, check the facilities. Yes. Check to see if there's a washer and dryer. I yes. will always check, depending on the time of year, like obviously air conditioning and washer and dryer. Those are the the two things that are super important, especially if you're going somewhere, you know, in the dead of summer, uh, yeah. you want to make sure that you're going to be comfortable and that you can wash your clothes. It's really important. And uh, it, honestly, it doesn't add anything to the price. It's just a question of whether or not they have it. Yeah, and I've got really unlucky with places that didn't have facilities. So I ended up washing our clothes in the bathtub or a sink and letting them dry. But like we had, so we're in Germany and we had a really tiny washer slash, I don't think it was a built-in dryer, but none of the knobs had anything in English. Um, oh no, we were in Croatia. So none of the knobs were in English. The symbols weren't intuitive and then it broke. And then we had washed clothes after it was done, but they won't, there's no dryer. So there's like these like, pipes that were in the bathroom that I I don't know quite what they're for still to this day. Um, I think, anyways, I'm not going to pretend I know, but I hung my clothes on that to dry it because it was so humid in Croatia. Nothing would dry with the window open. So 
there was like a blow dryer, so I like blow dried the underwear and socks. You told me this story, yeah. Well, that was yeah. awful. That, was, that took forever. Hey, but it, you did what you had to do. Yeah. So just be aware when you go into like any place that's not like quote northern or Americanized, like your laundry facilities are going to be different, and you might not know how to work the machines and have like a backup plan. And so be my adaptable. Plan is just so Yes. Be adaptable. That yes. is something that goes a long way. Yeah. I I ended up having to reach out and being like, hey, I don't know what's going on. Can we fix it? Yeah, we can fix it. Oh, it's still not working. Well, you know, we're just going to have a different fashion choice here for the rest of the week. And it's going to be maybe a little more risque or hotter than we wanted to because these are the clothes that I have left with. Yeah. And it was hot. And it was cold. In, in this whole same trip, we also went to England. So I had to bring like a really long, warm jacket and it was still summer and I was still freezing. Yeah. And then meanwhile, Berlin and Croatia, I'm just sweating my buns off. But, you know, I, I'm prepared for all the weathers when I travel because it doesn't seem to matter what I look at for weather wise. It will always be different than what I thought it was going to be. So 100%. Yeah. How about you? What are your favorite products that you like to use when you travel? Um, I have just like a little sample. I mean, obviously, I use generally better stuff at home, but travel size little guys like this, they they get the job mm -hmm. done. So it's like body wash, shampoo, um, toothpaste. I always bring a brush that can fit in something like this. This is kind of I think I've been using this as like my toiletries bag for about five years. And I think this used to house a, uh, an electric razor or something. No, Just like okay. a little, little tiny brush, you know, nothing too crazy. Brush your hair. Um, I love these things. If you have something a little more specialized that you use in the bath or in the shower, they're just refillable, uh, little three ounce containers. So they oh, do comply. Yes. Those are my favorite. I got I yeah. got one of those right here, and it supposedly has little suction cups, but they don't work. They don't stick to the wall. So they never do. Nice. Also, this is I love these. A new favorite. They're little tiny, um, just containers. Yeah. They're just little containers, and they're nondescript. You can put anything in them. You can put medication in them. I put moisturizer or like a like a hair paste that way you don't have to bring that whole thing with you and yes. then worry about oh is this over three ounces are, are they going to throw it away that's happened before so yeah. these things are amazing but uh then tweezers not only for your eyebrows but you never know when you need a good pair of tweezers so oh, i prefer yeah. the ones that have like scissor handles okay you get a little more more of a grip um but this is seriously the best travel hack ever Mini colognes. Oh, or perfumes. yeah, the teeny bottles. Yes, yes. Honestly, it might not be a fragrance that you're familiar with or might be your favorite, but so much better than bringing a whole 3.4 ounce, which, by the way, is like barely hitting that. That That is the limit for liquid. So I don't ever like to try that. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, just go to Macy's and just ask, hey, can I get a few samples? Uh huh. Sometimes they don't give them out. Sometimes they do. And now I have a couple samples for my next trip. And, and at least I'll be smelling good. Might not be yes. what I am used to wearing, but it's good. So that reminds me of, like, one of these must-haves I have in here. Um, this is um, probably something, like, everybody brings with them, right? Deodorant. I found these really teeny tiny deodorants oh, from I've seen Native, those. right? So, okay, if we are looking at a Q-tip, this is the size of the deodorant, and it's really yeah, skinny. So for me, awesome. the smaller the better. And I also have a good sunscreen. But with sunscreen, yeah. I try to pick sunscreen up in whatever country I'm going to um, because I think maybe they make their sunscreen better to the local area or something mm -hmm. like that. And I use really little bottles too for all my products. So there's, there's my hair stuff right here. 
And here's a little teeny bottle of like other hair stuff that I like to use. And always get reef safe sunscreen if yes. you're going diving or swimming in an ocean. Just be conscious of that. Yes. Please. And I also like to bring band-aids and a little bit of antibiotic ointment with me. Mm -hmm. um, because even if you can find it somewhere, you just prevent yourself from having to buy it again. And one thing that I found that really works for me while traveling is like, you're doing a lot of walking and my feet get messed up all, all the time. So I found these little tiny things. Yeah, you can see it right here. It's like a little tiny ring with like silicone in it. And you put oh. them like around your toes. So like if your one toe keeps like digging into your other toe, you can put this little, I don't know, little calamari ring looking thing <laughs> around it. And it's like a gel pad. So it keeps your uh, toes from like knocking into each other and digging. Very in. nice. And that's really helpful. And cool. so I, I squish all my little products into a tiny bag and it's clear. And I try to pack as many non water liquid products as I can. So if it, if I can get it in solid form, um, I like that. And I know there's a company out there that makes toothpaste that comes in little nibbles. That's actually not liquid. So it's like, it looks like a tiny piece of gum, but you put it in your mouth and get a little bit wet and it turns into toothpaste cool. and they have one for mouthwash too. It's like a little Alka-Seltzer. You put it in, boom, it gets in your water. And you've made yourself a little bit of mouthwash there. So Very nice. Go, going sustainable, tracking small, and the less liquid you have, the lighter it is. Very true. So those are our little like mini bags there, but you want to pack your bag with me? Do you want to show me how you pack your TSA compliant carry-on yeah. bag with all the essentials? And tell me what kind of bag you're using too, because you you told me that you're absolutely in love with this backpack and we've linked it in the description. Yeah. Check it out. All the links are non-affiliate. We're not making any money off no. of this, but we did want to share the info with you. So tell us about that bag you're rocking and what so, do you put in it? What are your absolute necessities for your carry on? Uh, I use this 44 liter Heinz Eagle bag and I don't know if you can see it. It's available on Amazon. I believe I paid somewhere around 60 or $70, which is a little steep, um, mm -hmm. even by my standards. But I can tell you, I have uh, traveled to New Orleans with this bag, to Australia with this bag, and I lived out of this bag shortly thereafter for, gosh, I want to say three or four months. And mm -hmm. it has not torn. It has not um, been compromised in any way. Uh, so I'll just kind of show you the inside, the inner workings, if you will. Sure. So um, this is going to be just very self-explanatory, just a front flap, but it has a lot of really cool pouches. I don't know. Let's oh, see. I love Let pouches. I love pockets. Organizing. I love, I love it. I love it. So yeah, a lot of cool stuff there. And then um, the inside, so the dimensions, just so you have an idea, it's it's about 21 inches, uh, trying to get the dimensions right. It's weird doing everything mirrored. 21 yeah. inches by uh, 13 inches. I feel like Vanna White. I and was it's, just going to uh, say, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's about nine inches deep. Um, okay. So pretty, pretty good. And the most important thing about this bag is that it is compliant as a carry-on. So awesome there. So the inside, uh, I don't know if you can see it. There we go. So it's yeah, got, got a little. Some, got some flaps there. Yeah, a little cross strap. Also uh -huh. came with some travel cubes, which oh, I, I, I don't don't have to show you, but they're really cool. They're just little um, nylon type bags that are square shaped, but they're very flexible, and you can kind of divvy up your um, clothes or your what have you in in really nice organized fashion so yeah um what's also really cool about this bag besides it being compliant and super uh full of organization is there's a back flap which is also called like a traveler's um back so basically you can put really important documents in here which i did mm -hmm. that way when this is on your back ain't nobody taking that it's right there it's the zipper is going to be like right there. 
So does that have like um, a, a padded pocket for your laptop too in that backpack? Uh, you know, I am pretty sure you can make that. It, this is a padded flap. So okay. I would imagine so. But I learned from yeah. another traveler to never bring a laptop when you're traveling. Um, so uh, I, I've just always kind of stuck with that. But also we've got side flaps, which were super helpful in Australia because it was pretty much the end of summer when I visited. Um, they're little, you know, water bottle holders on one side. And then it's got a handle here. So you can carry it as a suitcase if you'd like or wear it as a backpack like that. Ooh, that reminds me. Bring your own water bottle wherever you go, yeah, right? Yeah, for sure. I'm, yes. Uh, bring it through the airport, and I have one of those cool ones that's silicone, and it flattens, and you, like, wrap it up. It's really neat. Yeah. But got to have that water. Got to stay hydrated, folks. Yeah. Yes. Definitely. So what do you put in your backpack? Like, what are your necessities when you travel? Um, like, are you covering all the weather spectrum like I am and I crumble and I'm really small and I crumble everything real tiny into a teeny tiny bag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Generally um, I check what the weather's going to be like. Uh, the last trip that I planned, I was going to multiple climates. So it was, you know, it's kind of dicey, but wear your heaviest things on the plane Wear your big coats, your big boots, uh, yes. your long yes. pants, your hat, everything. Everything you can fit on your physical person, wear that on the plane. It's going to be a little uncomfortable. You might have to wiggle out of some things during the flight, mm. but we'll save you a lot of space in your bag. And then once you get to the Airbnb or the hostel, then you can kind of shed layers and then go from there. Um, yeah. What I put in here, obviously, is going to be, since this is pretty much my only bag, unless I want a um, like a backpack, like a what's considered a personal item. Mm -hmm. uh, which will like have, you know, whatever um, in there. Uh, I'm going to put my toiletries in here. Um, travel wallet is another really cool thing to have. It's like kind of okay. like a, you can wear it around your neck or your waist, but kind of under your shirt. So it's discreet. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Just kind of going back to what I was saying, I don't really have a full um, pack available right now to show you, but you know, socks, obviously. Um, I roll all of my clothes no matter what. Uh, this is a little shirt, Fleetwood Mac. So you, I like to roll things to where, you know, you can, you can see what it is. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of choose. And then it just makes it more compact and a little bit less likely to get wrinkled. But if it gets wrinkled, who cares? Who cares? Out of sight, out of mind. But yeah, I mean, I just like to, I like to bring an extra pair of shoes, some flip flops, some toiletries, a lot of mm. shirts, a lot of pants, a lot of underwear. Uh, and I don't really mean a lot. I generally bring about five of everything and then just check my facilities to see if there's a washer and dryer. Oh my gosh, that's, that's a good, good, nice rule. I wear, I bring like three weeks worth of underwear and like, on an overnight trip like i feel like i'm i'm really bad yeah <laughs> yeah i used to be like that too oh god because it's, just, you it's know, more of a hassle you never know when you're gonna just crap yourself 12 times in a row <laughs> but this will be the trip because murphy's you never like, know. it's gonna happen yeah you never know oh man so i mean that's really cool that you're able to recommend to us a nice bag uh one thing that's frustrating about shopping for luggage or anything is if you do it online they don't have pictures of all the stuff, you know? So yeah. I'm really, I really like watching uh, YouTube videos of people doing like um, pack with me's or showing the actual inside in a review and measuring it. And I like to see the differences between like people who are much bigger than myself. So I'm like about five feet tall, really pint size. My travel bag is much smaller compared to someone else who's twice my size. So I like to see how the similar tips can be used for both of us to be efficient in packing. Yeah. And if you're packing for two people and you're both different sizes, like I used to do, then it's just like, well, okay, maybe you can bring a couple more fancier pants or whatever yeah. because it, it fits. Cause my stuff doesn't, doesn't take up a lot, you know, 
Like I fit like four swimsuits, I think, into like a little teeny bag like this once. But my excuse was we weren't in, we were in Mexico, so they didn't need to be very big to begin with. So hey, hey, I had the whole rainbow going. It worked for me. Nice. So uh, that was like really cool being able to chat with you about how to travel and how to do it better. And it sounds like it's just kind of like something that you continually work on and you get better over time, but doing what you can to teach yourself and learn and Google beforehand is super helpful and traveling with someone and asking people of other travel, other friends who have traveled about their tips and experiences is pretty helpful too. Is there anything else that you can think of that you would like to share with people about traveling or what to pack or where to go? Um, or any, anything else you want to say to our audience tonight? Um, I would just say, don't think that anything is so far out of reach. I was someone who never really thought in a million years that I'd be able to do what I've done so far. Mm. Um, it, it really just is something, it starts off as small as a little idea and then just comes into fruition magically and it, things start to fall into place. So it seems overwhelming at first, but you got this. It's really fun and the joy of traveling often comes from me out of the planning uh, of the, for the traveling. So just have fun with it and, you know, live life. Enjoy. Yes. Don't don't forget to travel. You have you have the whole world of it. Well, America's kind of grounded right now, literally, because we've been the bad kids. So we're not yeah. able to travel. I, I think we can go to Mexico, Canada, and maybe a handful of other places, but we're not allowed in Europe. I don't think we're allowed in Asian countries right now. I, I'm pretty sure we're not allowed back in Australia right now, right? Yeah. But take yeah. that a lot of time to plan and really decide and center yourself to see what you want to do and where you want to go. Yeah. yeah. So plan, ask friends, uh, find your favoritest things and make them smaller. See if you can pack for multifunction. If you're like me, pack for comfort. If you're like Matt, follow his tips that he discussed here. So Matt, I want to thank you for being on the show and sharing your wealth of information with us this evening. I had such a great time with you. Um, I hope we can chat again in the future about other cool stuff that you're doing because travel is not the only cool thing you're always up to. So I want to thank you, Matt, for being on the show with us tonight. Thanks for having me, Sammy. You're welcome. All right. Well, you take care. Have a good night. And for all our viewers out there, thank you for watching. Thank you for those of you who commented live. And if you have any questions, you can follow Matt on the Instagram at the Cannibal Roses. And if you have any questions about the links that we talked about or the apps or technology, look in the description below. Oh, well, look in the description below. We copied links of the apps, the technology and other helpful places to look for information to help you plan your travel. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. But if not, don't forget to like, subscribe, and we'll catch you next week when we to talk with my friend, actually our mutual friend, Adrian, about the real estate market, how to become Ooh. a real estate agent, and how to work on buying your first property. Yeah, good stuff, right? He's from back in the day. We, we've all known each other so long. Way back. Way back, yeah. All right, Matt. Well, you have a good evening. Everyone else at home, plan your next trip. Stay safe. Stay healthy. We love you. Have a good night. Good night.